Hello, I'm Eric Smalling. I am a Docker captain and a developer advocate at Sneak. And I'm going to hear, as, as a Docker captain, I'm going to be here to tell you how to build images without Docker, which should piss off my friends. So um, what are images? Just for a level set, images are basically just a big bundle of tarballs. That's the file system basis and metadata and annotations that you use to create the, the basis for a, a container, right? They're stored in registries. There's a spec from OCI that's uh, all the runtimes and the, the builders uh, obey. If you've never seen a Docker file before, there it is. This is uh, basically the layers that make up an image, and it's kind of hard to see on my slide probably, but that's a, you know, a Tomcat image with a bunch of things were added to above it. And when you're making these, you kind of have to understand the images and best practices around them. You need to minimize the footprint, mainly for security reasons, but all other reasons. There are layer housekeeping rules that you need to understand. Build strategies like that multi-stage build we saw. Maybe you're going to try to use Dagger, like James was talking about. Um, there are organizational standards your company may push on you. And you're like, dude, Eric, I just want to build my app. I'm a developer. I don't care about all this stuff. Well, this is where some tools like Jib and Co and other tools like them can come along to your rescue. These are open source tools that allow you to build best practice containers for their given platforms. Jib is a Java-based tool. It's 100% Java implementation of an OCI image builder. You can use it in Maven or Gradle or other tools. And um, it provides standards that are overridable that um, don't need Docker or a Docker file to do. Same with Co. It very similarly, it wraps the Go build tool. You use it kind of in place of Go build. And it does the same kind of things. It also offers some Kubernetes and SBOM creation integrations that we'll get into in a second that are kind of interesting. Um, let's take a look at what a pipeline for a Maven build for a Java application might look like. You're going to have a Maven package. That in this case, is building a jar. It might be a WAR, a SAR, whatever. You're going to write a Docker file that is all best practiced up. It's going to build an image. You're going to take that image. You're going to push that into a registry somewhere. And then somebody, whether it's you or somebody else, in Docker or Kubernetes is going to run it. That process is pretty standard. If you've done it before, you do a Maven package here, and there's your palm file, and it creates, in this case, a little runnable, executable hello world jar. And you want to get that into a container. So we're going to go write a Docker file. That Docker file is going to look something like this, where you've got, this is a very simplistic one, obviously. We're going to start from some JDK, then we're going to build, copy our artifact in. We're going to put a label on it, maybe, to tell where it came from. And we're going to tell the, the runtime, hey, this is the command to run, Java jar, hello world jar. Um, very simplistic version. They were much more complicated than that often. They we're going to build this with the Docker tool. We're going to give it a tag, and we're going to end up with an image that is a Hello World app that is 312 megabytes, because Java. <laughs> I'm a Java dev, so I, I, I love it and hate it. Um, once you do that, you need to push it. So we're going to push it out to the registry that you've logged into. This is a local one, obviously, in my demo. And then somebody can run it if they have access to that registry, and you see you get your Hello World out. Not that complicated, but writing that Docker file, that's a super simplistic one. That's not always that easy. Jib reduces this to Maven package, or Gradle if you're doing Gradle, and you have an image out in the registry. That's literally how easy it can be. So the way this would work in a Maven type project would be you add the Jib plugin to your build plugins in your palm file. You're going to specify uh, you know, what the image is, where it's going to go. And I like to uh, attach it to my package phase of the lifecycle in Maven. So every time I run Maven package, I'm going faster than my slide. There it is. Maven package, you see at the end, a jar or an image is built and pushed to a registry as part of the Maven build. Docker not even having to be installed on the box or w name your runtime engine. No Docker file. It, it does it all best practice for you. And then you can go. Anyone can then Docker run. It'll pull it down from that registry and build it. Now, you can do it locally, too, but this is a, a common pattern. A CI server then doesn't have to have a Docker socket. It doesn't have to have a runtime engine. It's pretty sweet. If we go to Go, very similar, almost exactly the same. You've got a Go build that's going to produce a binary. You're going to then write some kind of Docker file that's going to bring it in, make an image, push it to a registry. You're then going to let somebody run it however they're going to run it. And I love their, their logo, the table flip package. So I'm doing this is an example Docker file that's actually doing the Go build as part of a multi-stage build, uh, statically by, compiling my Hello um, web app. And then the second stage is starting from a static and saying, hey, letting the runtime know what port to expose and the command. We do our Docker build just like normal. This is uh, doing the Go build as part of the build. So if you've not seen multi-stage before, that's what it's doing. And then we have an image that's a Hello World web server that's 9.24 megabyte. 
It is a web server, so I'll, it's okay to be that big. And finally, we push it, we run it, same kind of rinse and repeat here, right? And of course, this is the web app, so we're gonna curl it to see all our hello world. Patches, the sneak uh, mascot, if you're wondering why I used that word. So, co, just like Jib, you're gonna do a co build, it's gonna push it out to a registry, you're gonna end up then having a, a image out there that anyone can run that has access to the registry. It's gonna already be best practice, it's gonna be very similar to the, the, the Docker file I showed you, it's gonna have a static back. To use that, we're gonna set up where I'm gonna send it here with an environmental variable, I'm gonna run co build, and you'll see that the image is created, pushed out there. There's also some stuff in there about S-bombs, we'll talk about in a second. And then we're gonna run it, we're just gonna do a Docker run. It's got a very long tag because they are using a SHA hash by default, that is overridable and we curl the app and it's the same, same as before, just like, just like the Java one, just as for Go. And what's really cool there though is the Co is added by default, you can turn it off if you want, but it, by default it's making a software bill of materials, an SBOM for your image, automatically signing and sending it out to the SIG store recore uh, transparency log. So you have SBOMs kind of baked in if you want them. Um, of course you could point that wherever you want. Um, another thing that I kind of glossed over is if you are deploying to, to Kubernetes, they call a developer sandbox or something, you also are playing with kubectl most likely, and you've got a YAML file that you're probably updating with a new build number or something on your tag, and that can get a little annoying. Co has a little trick up its sleeve where you can make a small tweak to your YAML file and now do co apply, and it will automatically build a best practice image, sign it, S bomb it, put it out to Recore, and deploy it to your Kubernetes cluster, whatever your context is set up for. To do this, all you have to do in your YAML file is change the image to a co colon slash slash and point it to your GitHub repository or whatever repository. As long as it's formatted correctly, it will understand how to do all the magic. So you run co apply and come on slide, there it is. Um, in this case, I just decided to use Do um, Docker Hub. So it's gonna build, S bomb it, push it out to Docker Hub and then deploy it to my Kubernetes cluster. And you can see the pods and services running automatically and I can iteratively, from my desktop, co-apply, edit, co-apply, edit, co-apply, and it's gonna be very nice and streamlined. So why would you wanna do this, or why wouldn't you wanna do this? Um, first of all, obviously simplicity. These tools are hiding away, the, they're abstracting away the complexities of how to do the, a good image. They um, allow me as a developer to focus on what I do developing, writing Java code, writing Go code, and streamlines the process. That co-apply is really, really pretty nice. So it's just a single push button and go. Uh, next is, um, if you're uh, kind of an architecture or leadership around this, it provides guidance and governance to your teams. These best practices have been vetted by the open source community, so you're not relying on Eric coming up with some bash script that's the right thing, and then uh, somebody else coming up with something else. So, You've got that coming in, and you can override things with your own company's best practices. And security-wise, having that minimal image allows, it, it reduces the blast radius if somebody were to attack your app. If the tools aren't in there for them to use, they're not gonna be able to use them. The automation um, limits human error. Why wouldn't you wanna use these things? Well, it is abstracting complexity away that now is focusing, the people who know about containers become those few people that are the experts. And that lack of knowledge across the team might be problematic should the guy who's, or the, or the lady who's the expert on it beyond PTO. You might get compliance or complacent about your security. If you're not scanning your images regularly, things can slip in. So you need to make sure that if you are doing these tools that you have automation that is doing that and making sure your images are regularly being scanned. Plus, Docker files really aren't that hard, to be, to be quite honest. The syntax is pretty simple. Best practices are well documented, and there are linters and scanners that exist to catch issues around this. So, all that being said, I know there was a lot here. I'm gonna put these slides up on my Twitter account, so if you go to at Eric Smalling, they'll be there. Um, I have some blogs, I have some uh, videos, and I'll put the example code for this out there as well. Um, that QR code actually is a charity for Gordon the Turtle, who is the Docker Turtle, who his, uh, they had a big fire at their place. So if you wanna to give to Gordon the Docker Turtle, you can do that. Thank you very much. Find me out by the sneak booth.